Well, now I'm in it. Because now I'm in the shit. I am now... Sidol has done directed video stuff before this film. But they were like two. And then, you think he's going to make a comeback. Exit Wounds, I like. Half Past Dead, I thought was shitty. And then, Half Past Dead was a flop. And then the start of his 125,272 directed video films with The Foreigner. If they think they can stop him, they're dead wrong. And also, this got a sequel. I think it's that one called Black Dawn why this got a sequel and I looked it up apparently this film cost between 16 million to 20 million dollars how how released by TriStar and Franchise Pictures and the reason I'm not blowing my top is because I got so many to go and I don't want to have a heart attack this is a film that has an incomprehensible plot, many doubles, not even just fight doubles, but there's a scene where literally it's Seagull, or his character, from the back, going over a fucking gate, like a little fence gate, him just jumping over it. And walking down this little pathway. They needed a fucking double for that. Just one person said it best. Seagal just comes in, does a few scenes, leaves. And he doesn't give a fuck as long as he's got a paycheck. No, you do that with a double. You do that with a double. I'm not going to do ADR. You do the fucking ADR. And people wonder why, or Seagal wonders why no one respects him anymore. It's for your movies like this, and the many more to come. Incomprehensible plots. This barely has any action. What's there, it's very flashy. Michael Oblowitz was a music video director, and he's... I think he's an incompetent filmmaker. Filmmaker is saying too much. He's an incompetent director. It's poorly made. A lot of it's poorly acted. And it's unexciting and it's really fucking boring. This film takes place in Pol Well, some parts in Poland where you have a guy being tortured, asking about. Because another guy wants to know where the package is. And the guy being tortured says the package has been delivered, so he gets shot for it. And the first time he sees a doll, he's with a chick showing her ass to the camera. That must be part of his payment. That must be part of his paycheck. Hey, you know, I'm going to do this movie. I need a naked woman's ass next to me in the first scene of the movie. I was surprised he didn't ask it for every fucking movie. So yeah, the first scene of Seagal, there's a woman showing her ass and she's getting dressed. And he's supposed to... These guys want him to pick up a package and deliver to Germany. And Seagal's like, no, I don't want to do it because I want to see my father's passed away. I'm supposed to meet my brother. And then ultimately he says, okay, I'll do it. And him and this other guy who keeps getting you think he's killed, but he keeps coming back, and he's not a zombie, but he's just... He keeps escaping death. And the two of them are supposed to go to get this package, and they go to this farmhouse, and there's a little shootout. And any, it seems like any time, or almost any time, a piece of action happens, the director thought it was a good idea to have fucking rave music. Rave music. Booms and booms and booms. Anytime, like shootout, whatever. And does this flashy direction. Sometimes he'll cut like in and out, back and forth, back and forth. For example, there's a scene later on 
where he's on an escalator. Seagal's on an escalator. There's a guy touch him. He flips the guy to the other escalator. Imagine he's flipping the guy. He's flipping this. The camera's there. Then when he gets this way, the camera's pushed in. Then a second layer, the camera's out. Then the second layer, the camera's in. Then the second layer, the camera's out. Then the second layer, the camera's in. Then the second layer, the camera's out. Back and forth, in and out. Flashy, try-hard bullshit with rave music. So anyway, getting back to this scene on the farmhouse. Also, there's one scene where Sh Seagal's shooting and he misses. That's pretty rare, actually. And you have this guy with stars on. And he does this move, like, he looks over and, like, the camera pushes in, pushes back, and he escapes. That same fucking shot. The same fucking shot is that in the third act of the movie, only this time the guy dies. But they use the same shot of the star guy looking, push in, push out. I'm like, you literally stole your own shot that you had earlier in the film? It, it literally is just... And this is one of those plots that is so overly complicated, it's stupefying. Well, there's crosses of double crosses and triple crosses. And this person's working for this person, working for this person, working for this person. Because you're at the CIA, or the KGB, or the FBI, or the DNA, or the MBA, or the KFC, CFC, BC, but fuck of America. Or Russia, since he's now Russian. He's with Putin. But anyway, the shootout with his raid music happens. The, house, the farmhouse catches on fire. And it's kind of funny. His double, not even Seagull, his double and the other guy. I'll just call him one guy, because I don't even remember his fucking name. It's, you can't see him, but this guy next to Seagull, sort of white hair, well, not really, gray hair. He's a guy with the sunglasses. I'll just call him one guy, who anytime he beats upon someone later on, he shoots them, no matter what. And it's almost a drinking game. Anytime this guy shoots someone, when even he doesn't even need to shoot him, he just shoots him. Man, we get into that. That guy and Seagull, I'm, I'm surprised the guy didn't shoot the fucking old woman that's there. But I guess because Seagull's, well, sorry, Seagull's double is there, he didn't get the chance. But, you have Seagull's double, which you can tell because it's all from the back, and like they have it up close to the woman, but not of Seagull's face. And then the whole time, so Seagull's double is on back as they're going to the camp, to the car. They step him back and step him back. They go to the car. You see everyone's face but Seagull because it's not him. It's his fucking doubles. And I also find it funny. The two of them leave and they leave the old woman there just shivering in the cold next to a fucking house on fire. Great job, Seagull. You're a good guy. And you have lines of dialogue. One guy. He's going to open the package. The girl says, no, you're not. If you touch it again, I'll blow your two-inch dick off. It's literally a line. I'm like, how the hell do you know he has two, two inches? But seriously, uh, if you touch it again, I'll blow your two-inch dick off. And Seagal's driving. And then you have this awkward, awkward as hell editing where Seagal's driving with one guy who has the package. And then all of a sudden we're in a fucking nightclub with rave music, more rave music, women dancing. Seagal's looking at these guys in a club, I guess to show us, oh, Seagal saw him before. And those are the same guys that are in the farmhouse. I thought we were in a new scene. Then it comes back to Seagal and the guy in the car. I'm like, oh, I guess that was a flashback. I'm sorry. I had to take fucking five seconds to figure. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. I guess that was a flashback. It's like you're going here and then someone does. What was that? Oh, you slapped me. Okay. And why do we need to know that flashback? You didn't, so you're just awkward editing. So Seagull, you have the schizophrenic editing in this film. You got 
flashy directing, trying to impress people and impressing no one but himself. Uh, Seagal gets to an airport, and that's where you get that scene where a guy who works at the company, the CIA, or wherever the hell it was, just almost the back of every other directed DVD film has something with the CIA in it. I think it is the CIA because, oh, you know, you blah, 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 blah. And then Sigal calls him an asshole. And then the guy's buddy goes, I beg your pardon. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. I beg your pardon. Like, what the fuck are you saying? Or what the hell is your problem? No, he says, I beg your pardon. And Sigal does that flip. And that's where you get that rave music and back and forth schizo editing. And then it cuts to Sigal at his father's funeral. And his brother's there. While one guy, who is with Sigal, he kills these two guys. Then kills the maid. Uh, then goes to the guy that was sending Seagull in the first place, shoots him in the head. Uh, you have Seagull on a phone, and it's not even his fucking voice, it's an ADR voice. And by the way, as I'm explaining this, you don't get more and more confused, and I don't blame you, because the movie is the way... How I'm explaining it, as confusing as it is, is how this fucking movie is. The Foreigner. Yeah, maybe it was written by... I'd rather listen to the band Foreigner. I'll listen to that 24-7 and watch this fucking film again. Maybe it was written by a foreigner who didn't know fucking English. Maybe the guy who supposedly wrote this is a pseudonym for a guy who didn't know English. He just wrote a bunch of shit and said, no wonder it's fucking confusing. It's written by someone who didn't know English. Doesn't know anything about how to tell a story. So, Seagal's on the phone, it's not even his voice, which you don't hear that a lot throughout these reviews. One guy steals a car, and the poor guy is like, hey, you're stealing my car! And one guy just shoots him, because he's a bad guy. Then the guy with the CIA, he wants Seagal dead, and so he sends a guy, and this is a guy who has like purple pants and a purple fucking suit, as if he's a pimp. <laughs> So I'll call Purple Pants Guy, Purple Suit Guy. Then Seagal gets a phone call from the person he's supposed to send the package to, that guy's wife, who says, you know, give it to me. But Seagal's like, no, I'm not supposed to give it to you. I'm supposed to give it to your husband. Then he back, gets back to his room and he gets knocked out. Then you have a different guy we haven't seen before with a fucking British accent being over the top and ludicrous as hell saying stupid lines like deception, but just deception, but just deception. I'd rather take a bit of inception and forget the fucking movie. But Seagal bullshits its way to lead him to the package in a train station and this shows how much of an asshole Seagal is because he gets innocent people killed. Because they're at the train station, and you see in the background that there are people in this train station. Bear that in mind. There are people in this train station. They go in the bathroom. Seagull literally takes a piss and looks at the guy who opens the package, and it was a fake. Stallone put a bomb in there. So while Seagull's taking a piss, he, well, his double jumps through the fucking window, and the entire fucking train station blows up. Like, literally, the entire fucking station. Not just the bathroom. The entire fucking building blows up. So that means he killed a bunch of innocent people, which is never referenced before or since. It's never referenced, hey, a bunch of innocent people died. I guess they're supposed to expect this to be fucking idiots and think there was no one in a gigantic fucking train station, even though we saw people in the background. Even though it's a train station, of course there would be people there. So, Seagal, you just killed a bunch of fucking innocent people because of your stupidity. Of putting a bomb in a fucking train station. In case, if he wasn't there and someone got the package and hit it, that means it would have blown up and the explosion has been enough to blow up the entire train station. Imagine that. His plan, even if he take, he put a bomb in the package, put it in the train station to fake out anyone who gets there and opens it up. He's a fucking terrorist. Jonathan Cold, yeah, cold, cold-hearted, son of a bitch, asshole, fuck face. So he just killed everybody in the train station. 
In the movie, it's like, no, there's nothing wrong with that. He didn't know. What the fuck? Jonathan Cole is a cold-blooded killer in this movie, and the movie's too stupid enough to notice it. <laughs> and this is the start of these fucking movies. <laughs> so, after they did more ADR, and uh, that's the girl's fucking voice on a phone again, and then his much thinner double climbs over a fucking rail, goes down a little path, so that then Seagal shoots some, and then his fucking double, fight double, hits a guy off this thing into water. And then one guy, he's thinking he knows where Seagal's at, gets the female hotel clerk to dial the number to the room, and fucking just shoots her. Why? I don't know why he needed to shoot her, because this guy's a fucking idiot. And he goes in the room, and it's not Seagal in the room, it's the guy with the purple suit, the purple pants, who just got out of the shower, and he shoots one guy out the window with a shotgun, but one guy's not dead, because he had a vest on. Then Seagal visits the patch he's supposed to send to, that guy's wife, who called him earlier while purple suit guy thinks this car being driven as a goal and instead it's an imposter and the the guy says oh, this guy just came up and, and paid me to to drive this car and so a purple pants guy he shoots the fucking imposter that poor guy all he did was Steven Seagal went up to this guy paid him some money to drive a car and this guy got killed for it so you got him killed too Seagal you fuck cold yeah Jonathan Cold is his name this is a cold-blooded fuck and this movie's again too stupid enough to realize it so we go back to Seagal he opens the real package and it's a flight recorder which I'll get into what's in that in late bit. And the purple suit guy finally finds Seagal. And Seagal takes him to his abandoned building. And there's like a little wrist tape down. A little game of slap hands. It's just lame ass shit. And then the guy gets a gun and says, Sweet dreams, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee? Just because... Sweet, yeah. Sweet dreams, Bruce Lee. If this guy's fucking Bruce Lee, then I'm fucking Brad Pitt. It's a stupid line meant for an attempt of humor that's not even fucking funny. It's about as funny as fall down a fly of fucking stairs made of fucking tacks and nails. Or hadn't send your fucking head on fire from a fucking blue torch by a fucking shitty Christmas time with a little kid and having to put your head in the fucking snow. But here's the thing, Seagal has a disc and previously he put that CD with explosives that apparently it's a CD with explosives now that he tosses and upon impact Kinda looks like it blew the guy's guts out, but then there's like a shitload of sparks as if he's a fucking Terminator with made of metal or something, or I guess the guy's stomach is full of fucking firecrackers, and the guy fucking flies out of the building with sparks ablazing, and Seagal says, love a barbecue, and then again the guy flies out the building. <laughs> and then one guy finds Seagal there, uh, Seagal hits him and leaves and gets to the the intended for the package that that guy's wife who tells him about all oh, that flight recorder was about a plane crash and this one guy and it was a front for biochemical stuff and if you're trying to get me to understand your movie you're fucking failing on an F steal of fuck you failed on every level
and I just don't give a shit, and even the writers apparently don't give a shit, or someone didn't give a shit. Actually, not someone, everyone didn't give a shit. <clears throat> like her husband and that CIA guy from before are behind it. At the same time, the CIA plants bombs around that abandoned building where one guy is at. And he runs in slow-mo. You know how a lot of times in movies, a guy running slow-mo, it's like the hero, like Con Air, or other movies where the hero is slow-mo and there's explosion behind him. They do this for the villain. <coughs> for some reason. And he escapes the building before it blows up. Sergio meets up with that CIA guy. He's been messing with him. The same CIA guy who sent the purple pants guy after Seagal. Seagal just, you know, shoots him. <laughs> and then him and one guy team up for this scene where they go kind of siege this building and Seagal snipes some guys, shoots some. Uh, the one decent bit in the movie, Seagal turns a shotgun around and shoots a guy in a big bloody shotgun. But hell, if I want to see that, I will watch On Daily Ground, which is a ten times better movie than this. On Daily Ground is not that fucking bad. It really isn't that fucking bad at all. It gets a 4.4, .4, which these movies get? Fuck that. Fuck no. Like I said in my review, it's not that fucking bad. It's actually pretty damn good. Especially when compared to this bullshit. So a shotgun bl bid bloody squib. That's one thing. And it's 90 some minute running time. <clears throat> I remember that guy at the farmhouse with the scarred face that I said, that's where they reuse the shot here. It's the same shot, but this time Seagal does shoot him. And then lights another on fire. And then Sadol like, walks up to the husband and he tells he the story as if he's innocent, but he's not. And then Sadol just leaves. I don't know why Sadol didn't just kill the guy, he just fucking leaves. And then one guy is there. And one guy kills the guy. And then I guess the the woman and her kid left because they don't want to die. <laughs> Like everyone else did. This John and Cole would probably get them killed too. Just like you got the poor guy that he gave money to the drive and be an imposter. Just like you got those poor people in that fucking trade station killed. And then one guy is at Seagal's like room. And then the very short fight with too much fucking slow mo where he kind of breaks the guy's arm, but not in a cool way, but kind of gets the guy and does this. Kind of like gets the guy and does this. And then. A chop to the neck. And then the final shot is literally Seagull on a little boat, looks like a fucking tugboat, reading a letter from the woman saying her and her kid are safe thanks to you. Was that calm enough? Maybe that was calm enough. I don't know. <laughs> I got so many <laughs> movies to get through too. That's what's sad. That's what's sad. I got so many movies to get to. So, incomprehensible plot. Confusing double and triple crosses. Uh, trying to be too complicated for its own good. Boring action scenes. A lot of times it's just an obvious Steven Seagal double. Not even just for fight scenes, just for regular scenes. Sometimes not even his own voice in this movie, mainly when he's on a phone. Believe me, there's one of the ones coming up here does a lot worse with ADR. There are times where he's in the scene, he's talking, and then the next minute, it's not even his voice. The next minute, it is his voice. It's boring, it's slow, it's tedious, it's bad acting. Jonathan Cold is an asshole, and he's a shitty... He's shitty at his job. He gets a lot of people killed. He gets people killed in that train station. The poor son of a bitch, he paid money to drive his car. He got him killed. He gets a lot of people killed. This other guy, 
who I keep calling one guy because I can't remember his fucking name. He just has a habit of anyway he comes in contact, he just shoots him. That's just his thing. And he doesn't stay dead. You know, once he's to go throwing a CD and blowing a guy who's made of sparks and out a fucking building. And that's the foreigner. And what's funny in this cover, there's helicopters. I don't even remember being a fucking helicopter in the movie. Not much else I can say about it. Poorly directed, flashy, annoying editing. Total piece of shit. Foreigner can suck my dick. Plain simple.